Hi, we're going to figure out the acceleration due to gravity using this device right here. It's called a free fall device. And what we're going to do is we're going to analyze the distance time graph and the velocity time graph to figure out the acceleration of gravity on the Earth. We're going to use a device known as a spark timer. Now the spark timer, it takes the voltage from the wall, steps it up, and sends out a spark every 60th of a second. So when it does that spark, it actually will burn a hole through a piece of paper and we can measure f the distance from the first burn mark to all the others to figure out the acceleration due to gravity. Here's where you can see the spark timer work and hear the sound. Listen to the sound of the spark again, assisted with a little James Brown as well. Here we go. Listen for the spark. You can hear it go off and on. So what's going to happen is we're going to drop a piece of thermal tape between those two electrodes and it's going to burn a hole in each one and we're going to measure from the very first burn mark to all the others. So from 0 to 1, 0 to 2, 0 to 3, etc. And we put this little mass at the end so that the paper will fall straight down and not kind of flutter down because of air resistance. So there's the two electrodes and there's the tape and it will burn a hole in that tape every time it sparks, every 60th of a second. So, here's me getting ready to drop a tape, and I have an assistant push down on the spark timer and hold it until the tape falls all the way through. As soon as I hear the spark, I release it. Here we go. And that's all the data that we need. Now we're going to analyze that data, create a distance time graph, use a slope technique to create a velocity time graph, and figure out the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth. Okay, let's take a close-up look at that tape. See, that spark timer will burn a hole in it every 60th of a second. And as you can see, that first circle, that's zero. And then all those little dots were burned in 1 60th of a second later. And if you notice, the distance between each dot gets bigger. We're going to measure from the first dot to all the others to figure out the distance time graph. Then after we get the distance time graph, we're going to use an estimation technique where we're going to take the point before and the point after each data point to figure out the slope of the distance time graph. That's going to be the velocity. Then we're going to draw the velocity time graph. And when we do that, the slope of it will give us the acceleration due to gravity. And hopefully, we'll get 9.8 meters per second squared or 980 centimeters per second squared. The top of this data sheet is where you record your measurements for the distance that the object fell during free fall. So I'm going to scan through this so you can see, see where the dot is. So that first one fell about 0.4 centimeters. I'm going to scroll through so you can get the data. You can pause the video at any time. Sometimes the, the dots kind of swerve a little bit, so those are really right up on the ruler. And as you can see, they get further and further apart as the tape falls. Now be careful of parallax and try to make sure that you're reading it when the dot and the ruler kind of line up best. But you have to make your own judgment on something like that one <clears throat> because it's such an offset from the ruler. But that just adds some uncertainty in your lab. All right, there's 24 points. I'll scan again. Double check what you think. And then use the analysis to first draw a distance time graph of this data. Remember, each dot is 1 60th of a second apart. 
then look at the analysis to figure out how to calculate the velocities. Draw a velocity time graph that should be more of a straight line and then take the slope of that line of best fit and that should be the acceleration due to gravity on the earth. Data analysis for the free fall lab. Okay, so you should have already gotten your distance data from measuring the distance from the first dot to all the others. This is my simulated data that we're going to use to show you how to get the velocity calculations and then eventually to get the acceleration due to gravity. So, normally we would take slopes, but since the distance time graph is going to be a curve, it's hard to take the slope of a single curve, but we're going to use line segments to figure that out along with the slope formula. Now the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we're going to use that to figure out the velocity for each one. So what we're going to do, if I want to find the velocity at 1 60th of a second, I want to come over to my data, cover up 1 60th of a second, and use the point after and the point before as my two points in the slope formula. So when I do that, so for 1 60th, I'm going to take the point after, 0 0.5, minus the point before, 0, over 2 sixtieths, minus 0 over 60. And when I do that, I get 0. 0.5 over 2 sixtieths. Well, 2 sixtieths reduces to 1 over 30. When you got a fraction on the bottom, you flip it up. So that essentially becomes 0. 0.5 times 30, which is 15. So my velocity for 1 60th of a second is 15 centimeters per second. And we're going to do that for another one. Let's do it for 2 sixtieths. So for 2 sixtieths, again, I want to cover up that one. Take the point after minus the point before. So I get 1.2 minus 0.1 over 3 sixtieths minus 1 over 60. I get 1.1 over 2 sixtieths. Again, that reduces to 1 over 30. That's going to be a theme. And we get 1.1 times 30, which equals 33. So my velocity for 2 sixtieths is 33 centimeters per second. So here's the shortcut. The bottom is always going to end up 2 sixtieths which always reduces to 1 over 30, so we always end up on that last step multiplying by 30. So for 3 sixtieths, I want to show you the short shortcut. Again, we cover up 3 sixtieths, because that's the one we're looking at. We take the point after minus the point before, so 2.2 .2 minus 0.5, and that gives us 1.7. Okay. And we just realized that we're going to multiply by 30. And so when we do that, 1.7 times 30, we get 51. So we get 51 centimeters per second. So all you have to really do is take the point after minus the point before, and then multiply by 30. Point after minus point before, multiply by 30. Point after minus point before, multiply by 30. And then what you're going to do is you're going to graph the velocity time graph. And when you do, you can keep the bottom scale pretty much the same whatever you had for the distance time graph, that would work. Remember, they're all over 60th of a second, but you're going to have to figure out a new scale for the side. Remember to figure out the new scale. Remember to find out the new scale. You just take the largest number that you have to graph and divide by the number of blocks along that side, and then round up. So it's a nice number to count by to figure out your scale. You should get a nice straight line. Well, not necessarily perfectly straight. You might have some hiccups and stuff. But remember, we don't play connect the dots. We should just get one single line of best fit. And you're going to take two points off that line 
to find the acceleration due to gravity. Again, using slope. But this time, we're not going to take two points that are really close together. You're going to take two points off your graph. Make sure it's on your line, off your graph, and preferably as far apart from each other as possible. And just remember that all these times at the bottom are all over 1 60th of a second. Okay, And you should get a number, since we're keeping it in centimeters, somewhere around 800, 900, maybe low thousands. And then do the percent error, where the percent error is your experimental value minus the standard, which for this one will be 980, divided by the standard, again 980, then times that by 100 to change it to a percent. Okay? There you go. That's how to do the free fall lab analysis. Good luck, and see you later.